What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. All right, so uh, Tracy McGrady, former NBA player, a Hall of Famer. Some people think that he shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. Um, I think that he shouldn't have at least been a first ballot Hall of Famer, but that's just my opinion. But anyway, Tracy McGrady recently was asked uh, how he feels about uh, Steph Curry and his all-time ranking. I mean, you have people today uh, who feel like Steph Curry is a top 10 all-time player, uh, even Mount Rushmore. And uh, Tracy McGrady pushes back on that. As a matter of fact, this is what he said recently when asked about where, uh, whether or not Steph Curry's top five. He said, quote, no, you're tripping on that. He hasn't cracked my top 10 yet. He just hasn't. I think Steph has had a phenomenal career. Obviously, four championships, two league MVPs. He has a finals MVP. But if you go back and look at his career, when Draymond is out of the lineup for the season, if you look at Klay Thompson, who missed that season, to me, if one of your guys is missing and you can't make the playoffs, I, I can't put you in my top five or top ten. I just can't. Greatness to me is when one of your guys is out, you still have to elevate your team at least to the playoffs. They don't even make the playoffs when Clay or Dre are out of the lineup. They haven't even won a play-in game at all. Top five, no chance. Um, I don't necessarily agree with his reasoning why he keeps Curry out of a top ten, but just because of that. But I understand where he's coming from. Um, I just don't see a, I me mean, personally, I just don't see a top ten all-time player. With Steph Curry. I see a guy maybe top 15, maybe somewhere in that realm. Definitely top 20 ish. Uh, but top 10, no. Top five, that's a joke. It's a joke. Um, a lot of people keep talking about the four championships. But if I were to say, okay, well, why shouldn't Sam Jones be top five with, with his 10 championships? Then people are telling me, well, he played on a super team, right? Fine. Fine. When the Golden State Warriors were in their heyday, and LeBron was in his heyday in Cleveland, and we knew they was going to go to the finals in 15, 16, 17, 18, right? How much competition did the... Did the uh, those two teams have. Now, we we mentioned that LeBron doesn't, didn't have a lot of competition in the Eastern Conference. We all know that. That was the weakest the Eastern Conference had been since the 1950s. But when I say what real competition did Golden State have in the West at that time? I mean, yeah, you know, you had the Rockets one year. You had Lob City. You know, but they weren't really championship teams, and the, the Clippers are cursed. They did, you know what I'm saying? So it's not like Larry Bird, who still had to contend with the Sixers for many years with Dr. J, and later on the Bad Boy Pistons. And then, you know, Atlanta kind of had like a little three-year window where they was making a little noise with Dominic Wilkins. Um, I'm just saying, like, the Spurs had fizzled out just at the right time. Everything went right for Golden State to have that dynasty. Even Kobe and Shaq Lakers had to contend with Tim Duncan and the Spurs. Steph didn't really have that rivalry outside LeBron James. And then when Kyrie left, there really was nothing there. And then a lot of people point to that finals when Klay Thompson was hurt. Well, got hurt, excuse me. Um, Kevin Durant was hurt, except for a token appearance where he tore his Achilles. They lost. Now, I'm not saying that they should have beaten that team. But, they, you know, but the Warriors still had a pretty nice squad. Um, I mean, I, I, when, I look at, when I look at Steph's accomplishments, man, I just don't see a top 10 player. I just don't see that. You know, he yeah, he does have the two finals MVPs, the four championships. 
the two scoring, I think it's two scoring titles, I think it is, right? Is it, yeah, it's two scoring titles, I think. Um, I know he definitely won one in 2016. Um, led the league of steals one year. I'm just sorry, but I, I can't help but make a comparison between him and, say, Dr. J. Like, when you look at Dr. J's career, right, when you combine the ABA and NBA, right? And also, I'm going to say, well, the ABA was easier or whatever. Okay, well, then, if you're going to say that, then you also have to concede that the NBA was easier because during the 70s because a lot of the talent was, a lot of talent was over in the ABA. So by that logic, maybe we've got to question Kareem's six MVPs because maybe if George Gervin, Rick Barry in the early 70s before he came back to the NBA, um, Dr. J until 76, um, Zelmo Beatty, uh, Artis Gilmore, you know, uh, I don't know about Mel Daniels, whether they were transitioned to the NBA as well or as dominant, but you get the point. Well, if all these guys can't went over in the NBA full time, maybe Kareem doesn't win six MVPs. You know, George McGinnis in his prime, you know, uh, Connie Hawkins when he was younger, but you get the point. But I want to look at something with Julius Irvin. I want to look at his resume when you combine the ABA and NBA. When you combine the ABA and NBA, Julius Irvin has three championships, right? Curry has four. Curry has two MVPs. When you combine the ABA and NBA, Julius Irvin has four MVPs. Four. Five of you include the playoffs in VP in 74 and 76. Well, uh, six if you include the AB the uh, playoffs in VP in 74 and 76. He was a 16-time All-Star, right? Two-time All-Star Game MVP. Nine times all first team. Two times second team. He was on the all defensive first team in the ABA. Steph Curry never been on the all first team. Matter of fact, let me look up, let me list all of his accolades. NBA champion, 83. Two time ABA champion. Two time ABA playoffs MVP. NBA MVP. Three time ABA MVP. 11 time All Star in the NBA. Well, I'm, I'm, it's five time ABA All Star. Two time NBA All Star game MVP. Five times All NBA first team. Two times All NBA second team. Four times All-ABA first team, All-ABA second team his rookie year. ABA All-Defensive first team, 76. ABA All-Rookie first team. Three-time ABA scoring champion, ABA slam dunk champion. Number 32 retired by the Brooklyn Nets. Number six retired by the Philadelphia 76ers. The ABA All-Time team. He's the ABA All-Time MVP, 35th, 50th, and 75th anniversaries, right? 30,000 career points. 10,000 career rebounds, 5,000 career assists. Uh, I think he had 5,000, excuse me, 2,000 career steals, almost 2,000 career blocks. College basketball Hall of Fame player, NBA Hall of Fame. Now, when I say all of these, his resume dwarfs Steph Curry's. But yet, people will say Julius Erwin is not a top 10 all-time player. But yet, I'm supposed to annoy Steph Curry as a top five or ten player, even if his resume doesn't stack up with others, who he's supposed to be superior to. I can't do that. There's going to be people making all these comparisons. I don't care what you say. People making, um, you know, arguments as to why Curry, the degree of difficulties, shooting and all of that. I don't care about any of that. What I care about is his resume. Not how good a three-point shooter he is. I don't care if he's, quote, the greatest shooter God ever invented. Look, at some point in time in his career, I would say in the late 80s and early 90s, you can make an argument that Dale 
Ellis was the best shooter, the best three-point shooter, at least, in the NBA. I don't think Dale Ellis comes up much when people talk about the best players of the 90s and 80s. He doesn't. He might be like a a third-tier guy. Oh, yeah, Dale Ellis. But it's, for some reason in this analytical era, shooting, three-point shooting has become like the supreme skill. Like, if you can shoot threes, it doesn't matter if you can't do anything else, like J.J. Reddick, but if you can just shoot threes, then you can become the next head coach of a major sports franchise. But a great player like Sam Cassell, who was really good at everything there and there, there, can't get a head coaching gig. But anyway, that's just my take on this. Tell me what you guys think.